everybody, Patton here. Welcome back to the channel. So AutoBleam has a new release. We have 0.6 Beta 3 just released. The team has really outdone themselves on this one. There's a ton of new features that I'm going to go over with you guys. But first, I'm going to show you real quick how to set this up. Super easy, super quick. So there's only a few things you need to get this working. One is obviously the PlayStation Classic. The second is a compatible flash drive. You can also use a hard drive with this, but it has to be externally powered. And third are the AutoBleam files that we have right here. And then your game files, which you will have to find on your own, I cannot provide those to you. So first we have to prepare our flash drive. The drive has to be in FAT32 format and labeled Sony. If you have a large flash drive, you may not be able to do this in Windows, so I will provide a program in my description that you can use to format the larger drives. All right, so here's our flash drive. I'm going to right click it, and go to format. I'm going to change the file system to FAT32. Make sure quick format is checked and under the volume label we're going to type in Sony all capitals. So it should look just like this. FAT32, Sony, quick format, hit start. In my description I'll have a link to the AutoBleam files and it's going to look something like this except you'll have the new version with beta 3. There is a new release which you can't see here because it's the old version but the AutoBleam guys in Genderbent who creates Retroboot have teamed up and they've made a release with Retroboot included. So instead of downloading the AutoBleam for Retroboot from Genderbent and AutoBleam from the AutoBleam guys that's now in one release together. And that happens to be the version that we're using today. So if we go into our AutoBleam 0.6 Beta 3 Retroboot folder, now your PlayStation 1 games will go in the Games folder here. If you're using the Retroboot version, you'll have the RetroArch folder here and the ROMs folder. The ROMs folder is where you put your games from other systems than PS1, like Super Nintendo or N64, and any AutoBleam themes you have will go in the Themes folder. There's a lot of themes you can find on the PlayStation Classic subreddit or on the AutoBleam Discord. One of the new features that I'm going to touch on once we start up the PlayStation Classic is the ability to change your menu music. So the music will go in this AutoBleam folder, bin, AutoBleam, and then music. You can see we already have one audio file in here. You can now highlight everything here, right click, and copy. And then you're just going to paste all those files onto the root of your flash drive. Once everything's been moved over onto your flash drive, you want to safely remove that drive from your computer. Then you just need to plug it into the controller port on your PlayStation Classic or an OTG cable if you're using one of those. And that's all there is to it. So let's boot up the PlayStation Classic and take a look at the new AutoBleam Beta 3 release. All right, so we're starting our PlayStation Classic up for the first time there at the bottom, AutoBleam Beta 3. You may get that notification at the bottom, games changed. So we're going to hit the X button to scan any new games that we've added and you'll get that message anytime you add a new game to your flash drive. Before we get into the menu and all the options, I have to talk about this really, really cool feature. We have very, very early and limited analog support. And that's because the developers only have access to so many controllers, like they don't have a DualShock 3 controller. So it is very, very limited. We do have a compatibility sheet made up. It's very, very early but there are a few controllers we do know for sure that will work with this new feature. Unfortunately, the two controllers that I have, they haven't been able to get their hands on, which is an original DualShock 3 controller and an 8-bit Do Famicom 30 Pro controller. And neither of my controllers work with this, but I can show you what happens when you first start up your system with a new analog controller. So I have my DualShock 3 plugged into the PlayStation Classic right now. And you can see here when I first started up the Classic again, new gamepad found Sony PlayStation 3 controller. And then it goes through every button on your controller to map them. So we have X, circle, square, triangle, start, select, L1, L2, R1, R2. And if you're using an analog controller, you can choose to use the analog sticks rather than the D-pad. It's either or, you cannot use the analog controls with the D-pad. So it's either the D-pad or the analog stick right now. And again, this feature is very early, super, super early. It's still basically in testing phase. So I'm gonna hit X for yes. My configuration has been saved. Hit X to continue. So try out some of your USB controllers and report back to the AutoBleam guys what your findings were. Make sure you go into the game also to test it completely because your controls may work on the menu, but in gameplay, they do not function right. Let's check out these menu options. If you hit the start button, you'll go into the AutoBleam menu. X will rescan your flash drive for any new games. 
the square button will take you into the RetroArch menu if you're using the RetroBoot version. Hitting triangle will take you to the About screen. Select will take you to the Options menu. Holding down the L1 button will give you the advanced options, which are memory cards and game manager. And holding L2 and R2 will power off the system. So we're gonna hit select and check out the options menu first. You have various language options. A theme selector for this menu here, you have the GB, default theme, and evolution theme. The next option is for selecting the theme in your games menu. You can choose between the evolution UI auto bleam menu or the PlayStation Classic menu. You can have a ton of cover styles for your games. This is where you're gonna select what menu music is playing. You can turn on or off whether you want to see the internal games on your games menu. You can turn on widescreen for your games. This isn't true widescreen, it is just stretching the image but it still looks nice on a lot of games. You can add a quick boot option for when your system starts and you can say how long that option will stay on the screen before disappearing. The two options you have are for the user interface and RetroArch. The next option is to either turn on or off the menu music. The GFX filter option just adds a bilinear filter to your game. This can also be toggled in the triangle and select menu in game. This option will show or hide RetroArch on the main menu here. And the same with this advanced option. If you turn both of these off and we go back, you see we no longer have those options on the main menu. This showing timeout option is brand new. Once we get into the games menu, you'll see a title at the top of the screen. And this option, you can set it to zero to have that title always appear there, or you can set how many seconds go by before it disappears. Holding L1 gives us the advanced menu options. Hitting X here takes us to the memory cards option. This is where you can create a custom memory card that you can share between games that share save games like Resident Evil 2 or Gran Turismo 2. So you would create a new card by hitting square, name it whatever you want, then hit start to confirm. And then that card will be saved on the flash drive. As for the other option in the advanced menu, I'm gonna go over that when we go through our games menu. So I'm gonna hit start, we're gonna go into our games menu. Now I want you to pay attention to the top of the screen. So at the top it says showing all games and it says how many games you have total. So that's what that last option in the other menu was talking about the showing timeout. You can have that disappear after a while if you don't want that on the top of your screen the whole time. I'm going to set it to zero so it never disappears. So here's the auto bleam games menu. All of our games are here lined up nicely. We do have the case filter on here. I believe I have it set to the North American wrinkled version which I like a lot. So another new feature here you'll see below the game title you see the publisher in the year which we had before now you have a serial number and the region the serial number is what the database uses to find the box art for specific games and then you have the icon there for however many players a game is how many discs it is whether it's on the usb drive or not if it is in high res mode and if the game data is locked if you hit triangle here it'll go into a very in-depth button guide if we hit down while on the game, we have the settings option, which was the same as hitting the select button on the main menu. Moving over, you also have game options, the memory card manager, which is not working in beta three. And the last option we have here is for suspend points. If we hit X on here, you see we now have four different suspend points that we can use with auto bleam. And there's also an option to delete a suspend point by hitting triangle. Checking out the game options real quick. We now have a favorite option, so you can add a little favorite tag to whatever games that you have on your flash drive. This does not work on the original games yet. You can lock the data, which means it will lock the title data, the year, and things like that. The high res option will make your games run in a higher, sharper resolution. And then you have a speed hack option here. Some games, when using that high res option, can slow the game down, so the speed hack will help with that a little bit. You can now add scan lines to your games, and the option right below it tells you what level of scan lines you're using. The higher the level, the more dense your scan lines will be. You can now set the clock speed for your games. This helps for some games that have crash points, such as Parasite Eve 2. There's a crash point in a gun range that if you don't set your clock speed to 70, it will freeze on that part. You can set your frame skip levels. You can choose what plugin you're using for the games. You can use the built-in GPU or PIOPS. 
And then we have the last option here, SPU interpolation, which you shouldn't mess with unless you know what you're doing. This has to do with changing the audio. Just like you have to make some changes when increasing the resolution from a standard definition game to a high definition, you also have to make some options for the audio. So this option can help on some games that are kind of jittery or stuttery. At the bottom, we have some more options. Hitting triangle will rename the game. You can hit the square button to change the memory card that you're using. This is where you would select a custom memory card if you made one in the main menu. And the start button functions as the memory card manager before if you wanted to create a new memory card to share between games. So I'm going to add a few games to my favorites here. So Castlevania Symphony of the Night is definitely a favorite of mine. If you try and favorite a game that is on the PlayStation Classic itself, the option is there, but you cannot select it. How about we favorite Jet Moto? That's a good one. Soul Reaver. And we will do Silent Hill. So another new function is to group your games on this menu here. You can group them by what's on the system, what's on your flash drive, all the games together, and then the games you favorited. So right now we're showing all games. It tells us how many games we have in this menu, 32. If I hit select, now it's showing only the internal 20 games. Hitting select one more time takes us to our USB games. And hitting it one more time will take us to our favorite games. Also, when you favorite a game, a new icon is added, you will get a little thumbs up. I'm going to boot up a couple games real quick as I want to show off the bilinear filter option and the high res option. So this is Castlevania Chronicles, a 2D PlayStation game. This is without the bilinear filter. If we go into our triangle select menu and we hit toggle filter, you'll see that filter has been applied. It kind of smooths out the pixels a little bit. All right, so here's Silent Hill with no high res option selected. This is how the game normally looks. And here it is with high res turned on. You can see it's a lot smoother. And here it is in high res with the widescreen option turned on. Doesn't look too bad. That's all I got for you. So remember, this is still beta phase. There are a lot of things that are still being experimented on. Not everything is fleshed out and cleaned up yet. They did a tremendous job with this release. And in my opinion, this is how you want to play your PlayStation Classic. So I will have all download links in my description as well as the AutoBleam Discord if you have any problems. Please go there. There's a ton of people there that are willing to help out and troubleshoot. So as always, thank you all so much for watching and I will see you next time.